Hello and welcome to For the Quantum Grammar Shoot number 138. That's right, I have made 138 of these podcasts, which can be found on SoundCloud, Anchor, Spotify, and YouTube. If you want some of the earlier earlier ones, you got to go to SoundCloud and Anchor. I'm your host, Colin Jason Knight from Matthew Colin Glass. You may call me Jason. This podcast, which is the only one of its kind that I know of on the interwebs, I will look at topics through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, i.e. quantum grammar, the wonderful technology, communication technology, uh, mathematically certified, brought to the public in 1988 by the late Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. I was just watching uh, the debate last night between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. And um, really, from an unbiased point of view, which I have no bias, I don't uh, care for either one of them. However, I do find them both entertaining in their own ways. Uh, It did seem like it was basically a three-on-one scenario. It did seem like the moderators and Kamala Harris were basically on the same side in that they had um, animosity for Donald Trump. It's pretty obvious, actually, to anyone who watches it. Now, I know the folks on the left are going to say, well, it's because, you know, Donald's a felon and he's... uh, He's a bad person. He's he's a racist and uh, a sexist and uh, and so why wouldn't you be against him, right? Kamala's a woman. Well, Kamala may be a woman, and she may not be a white woman. She, whatever kind of woman she is, I'm not sure. Sometimes I've heard she's Indian. Sometimes, well, recently I've heard she's black, but it does change. I've uh, I've noticed that a lot of folks say that, number one, they're going to vote for Kamala because they don't want Donald Trump in there. That's the only reason they're voting, not based on platform or anything else. They just don't like Donald Trump, so they're going to go vote for Kamala. Or number two, they're going to vote for her because she's a woman. No other reason. Not the platform, nothing else, just that she's a woman. And number three, that she's a woman of quote-unquote color. <laughs> As if... You know, Donald doesn't have a color either. You know, Donald's colored too. Everybody has a skin color. All right? Nobody is transparent skin color that I know of. So, you think about that. So, I'm thinking about all the things they're talking about. And then I got to thinking about something that I saw where uh, a young lady named Candace Owens was deleted from YouTube in the past week. And the reason that I can see through logical deduction is that she had a debate with a rabbi, a Jewish rabbi, and because of that debate, all of a sudden she started getting strikes on her channel and then content removed, demonetized, and then erased off YouTube completely. So it got me thinking. The debate. Donald made the claim that Kamala hates Israel. And then Kamala was uh, sure to come back and profess her support for Israel. But also um, talk about the two-party state, blah, 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 blah. Look, I've never been to Israel. I've met some Jews. Uh, I've never met a Jew that was rude to me. Um, So, I only know what I read. And I've been reading for, ever since World War II, that there's been uh, ongoing settlements over there. And from what my cognition of this scenario is, is that there are people, 
non-Jewish people living in houses in a location in the Middle East and the folks who are in Israel, families, Jewish families, are legally kicking the folks, the natives who have been living there for, I don't know, dozens of years, decades, kicking them out of their own homes and claiming those homes as their own or demolishing the homes to build new homes. Basically, you got a neighborhood, there's folks that have been living there for 60, 70, 80, 90 years in their family houses and now suddenly these new people come in because guess what? The Coalition of Nations said, hey, we're going to drop, we're going to create this new nation called Israel. We're going to put it right here. Oh yeah, we're aware that uh, people already live here, but they're going to have to make way. They're going to have to make room. Boom, they drop it right there and we'll just kick everybody out and take their land legally because Israel. And that's going on. And it's the same thing that happened in North America. It's the same thing that happened in Europe where you have folks basically conquering and subjugating other folks based upon religious ideologies. They have the right to do it because they're the chosen ones. In Europe, it was the... Well, <clears throat> for lack of a better term, to put it all-inclusive term, the Christians who were basically bringing Christianity to the to the non-Christians over there and they had to either accept it or die. And they got their land taken away and everything else and their sacred sites were desecrated and churches built, Christian churches built on top of them. Same thing that happened here in North America with the natives of North and South America. Same thing. You know, they, they call missionaries. Oh, missionaries, we're bringing all, but we're bringing food and clothing and vaccinations to these people who didn't ask for help, didn't need help in the first place. Didn't want your uh, monotheism here, but hey, whatever. You can couch it however you want to. Anyways, it's colonialism, settlers, that whole deal. That's what's going on over there in the Middle East right now. If you agree with that, that's up to you. That's your choice. But supporting Israel is supporting that ideology. Keep that in mind. Now then there's the other side where you, I'll see like rational folks saying, well, you know, you understand that the Palestinians elected a terrorist organization to be their government. Uh, did they? Did, did the Palestinian people do that? That's like saying the people of the past tense United States elected Joe Biden. That's like saying that. Like, what, what does that even freaking mean? Besides nothing. There is no election. It's a selection. If you're invested in this political system, like, I like what George Carlin said about it back in the 80s. Like, there's a saying, if you don't vote, don't bitch. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. If you vote, if you don't vote, you can bitch. That's what I was trying to say. It's like, and I've said this before, it's, to me, it's, it's akin to an abusive relationship. The government is the abuser, and you are the victim. And as long as you stay in that relationship, you're going to be abused. And you can complain about it to your friends. Oh, the taxes are so high. Oh, I can't believe these illegal, illegal aliens are taking our jobs. And How are these illegal aliens getting these benefits when I can't even live paycheck to paycheck? You know, complain about it. You've been voting. How do you get out of an abusive relationship? What is the solution for that? Stop participating in it. Stop participating in your abusive relationship and then you will see a way, a different way. Let's put it that way, a different way. 
And then folks will say, well, it's the only system we have. Next time it's going to be better. This time it's going to be better. Whether it's the left or the right, whoever gets in there, it's going to be better. This time it's going to work. This time we're going to make change. Like Kamala Harris out there saying, if you vote me into office, I will make the changes. It's like, lady, you've been in office. Why weren't you making change? Why are you ready to make changes now? Why didn't you make changes then? Why? Because it's a fiction system. <clears throat> and there is nothing that's really going to change. I can guarantee you that. So it doesn't matter who gets in there. It really doesn't. So if you put your faith in that system, then you're going to get what you get. Like they say, voting for the lesser of two evils. Well, how's voting for evil been working out for you? Cool. Is life better for you and your loved ones than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago? Hmm? Have things gotten better? Are things so much better that we're in a utopian society right now with no problems? Or less problems? No. Actually, there's more problems and more restrictions. More of everything. More of everything. And you sit there and let it happen. Am I wrong? And by you, I'm, I'm, I'm including myself in that group as well. Um, and they say if you don't vote and you don't participate in it, then, uh, well, guess what? If you don't participate in an abusive relationship, how can you be abused? It's a way to protect yourself. Yes, you are coerced into participating with this system in one form or another. But there are ways to do it that don't damage yourself and you don't get raped every two seconds, financially or otherwise. You know, I've got to worry about things like rights and legal legalities and laws and things like that. I mean, I mean, you have to be aware of them, but they don't affect you so much if you follow those three principles of the balance of honor and grace, position of peace and neutrality, and maintenance of rule one, rule equal. I just started, uh, where's my book? I just started reading a, a book by Marcus Aurelius called Meditations. And I would highly recommend that to uh, anybody out there who wants a good navigational guidebook when going through the fiction system or through the system of fact and dealing with people. I've read it before once a long, long time ago when I was in, I think, high school. I'm rereading it now, and I don't really remember any of it, but boy, there's a lot of wisdom in it. I'm a big fan of stoicism. So, all right, um, I guess that's about all I had to say. I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the debate, how goofy I thought it was. It wasn't as entertaining as I thought it was going to be. Uh, objectively speaking, I would say that I was very surprised at Kamala that she stumbled a bit at the beginning, but she caught her stride and she must have really, really practiced, really trained. Because normally she can't even make sense. But in this, she was actually able to put together some fairly long uh, concepts into sentences without using her usual circular word salad. So that was impressive from her. And uh, Trump, oh, and also Kamala kept looking at Trump. She kept, like, staring at him when she would talk and pointing and gesturing. Trump never really looked at her. And I understand why. Because Trump is probably, I'm guessing, keenly aware that he does not want to be perceived as a bully. So he didn't really look at her because if he would have just stared at her 
then people would have said, oh, he's bullying her. She's a girl. He's a... So suddenly it matters. Gender matters suddenly. Suddenly it matters that a boy shouldn't bully a girl, right? But yet Kabbalah can stare at him and call him names and stuff, but that's not bullying, right? Because he's a boy. Suddenly that matters in that type of scenario. I'm just throwing that out there. It's, it's funny. Also, when they were talking about re-implementing the, the military draft, suddenly gender mattered suddenly you start people kids started thinking oh well maybe <laughs> maybe we ought to be able to tell the difference between girls and boys huh by the way folks there are three genders do you know what they are at least that's what i learned in school and to the best of my knowledge i agree i agree with that the one gender is not common at all not common uh in any sense of the word there are predominantly two genders 99% of the time, but there is 1% of the time when there is a third gender. If you know what that is, if you know the correct name for that, put it in the comments. I wish you all peace and a happy week. Thank you.